Hello, everyone, and welcome to this year's Hypers Games Conference 2022 online version. My name is Florian. I'm VP of Publishing at Tap Nation. I've been in the company for two and a half years. Some of you already may know me. I've had the pleasure last year of presenting uh, a presentation about TPTO, one of our other hits at Tap Nation. This year is uh, I have the pleasure to present another one, uh, this time about figuring art, uh, twofold success. And uh, this is a very special one for me because it is our very first internal production games entirely made by the Tap Nation team. So without further ado, without making you wait any longer, let me just jump straight into it and start sharing my screen. So figuring art, a twofold success. Let's get into it. Uh, for us, figuring art was a comeback to our roots. Uh, actually, the very first project I had the pleasure of publishing uh, under Tap Nation was Sneaker Art, which was also a simulation game. Sneaker Art released in June 2020 and topped uh, top three in the US. And uh, figuring art came about thanks to, to Sneaker Art. We had the, the idea because we thought about what do people like collecting? Sneakers was, a, was actually our first idea. I'm a very big fan of sneakers, so this was the first thing that came to mind. But obviously, we're all working gaming and uh, figuring and action uh, heroes, superheroes, uh, anime characters uh, is also something that people like collecting a lot. A lot of YouTubers have them in the background. So this is how we thought about doing a simulation games about figuring. Actually, the first version that we did of uh, a figuring art was back in 2021 in May 2021, to be precise. You can actually see a couple of pictures uh, on, the, on this very slide on the right. Uh, and the first versions that we did, uh, although you can see two different types of art direction, one that is more realistic on the left with the Iron Man, and another one that is like those small chibi figurines that a lot of people collect on your right with the Batman. Uh, didn't have the painting mechanic, which is a staple in a DIY type of game and simulation type of games. The, it only had the assembling uh, gameplay. So you had on the bottom of your screen, you had different parts uh, coming from various superheroes and you just have to tap on the right one and slide it over to the part of the body that you wanted to put it on. Uh, so obviously this was a very like a short prototype. Uh, and results at the time weren't very conclusive. Like we had a somewhat okay CPI, but uh, not that much. And that's why we tried a couple of versions to see if we could improve it, but uh, we didn't go anywhere with it. This was the very beginning. Um, and this is when I get into a little bit of the details as to how Sneaker came about, because it had a very similar uh, origin story, let's say. Uh, sneaker art uh, was made in three versions originally. We had two versions, a first version made in 2D, only with the painting mechanic. A second version made with 3D shoes, where you had to paint the shoes in 360. And a third version with 3D shoes, but with only one side that you saw uh, and that you were painting. Uh, this third version was the one that you can actually see on the pictures right here. And it's the one that is available on our account. Uh, and it also had what made it a success compared to the other two, which had a great CPI, but unfortunately not a good enough retention. What made the difference for these versions were the addition of multiple gameplay parts. So as you can see on this slide, we started it off with the painting mechanic, obviously picking your shoes, but painting mechanic. Then we laced up the shoe. You could actually choose your own laces, uh, and then you could pick the drag and release the, the shoe into the box. There was a little bit of physics. And we also had this uh, shop, this main shop, where you can see the overall collection of shoes that you had made, that you had customized. Uh, so this was the uh, product that came into publishing. This was what got us over the uh, threshold of 40%, the one retention, and what allowed us to uh, publish sneaker. So it felt like taking this lesson that we had and applying it to figuring art was the best way to go. So 
um, when we took over the project internally, we thought about it in the very same way as Nika, as I said. So we, we took a lot of um, the structure and the screen usage that Sneaker art, and we made it into figuring art. You can recognize the uh, UI when it comes to selecting your colors, as well as selecting the premium paints. Um, and the first CPI test was after three weeks of production. Uh, the initial testing was only made with three figurines. There was Iron Man, there was Spider-Man, as well as Goku that you can see on your screen right now. Um, we thought, of course, about the hype and the, the fact that a lot of MCU characters were working very well in terms of CPI. And it actually proved to be right because the original test yielded a 50 cent CPI. And this was with the Iron Man character, uh, painting it in the very same color than, that he is on the, uh, on the various movies, basically. And the first retention rate was of 18%. So in, in terms of simulation games and DIY games, 18% is a very, I would say, average retention. Uh, I would say that most simulation games fall into between 15 to 20% on a first test. Uh, if you get any higher than that, any higher than 20%, you can actually say that you are above average when it comes to a, a first test for a simulation games. For this one, we fell right into the average with 18%. The first version only had the assembling part, which I talked about a little earlier, as well as the painting this time around. So we had a really, well, pretty good CPI because 50 cents is not like super amazing, but it's, it's actually pretty good. Um, but in-game stats were, as I said, quite average. Playtime was around 400 to 500 seconds. So yeah all around, I would say, quite average. But uh, this time, we weren't going to leave it just at that. We were deeply uh, committed to make this game a success. So we decided to make some gameplay changes with the sneaker in mind. Uh, so what we added this time around, obviously, we couldn't retake the lacing, the put it in, well, the put it in the box. Actually, we did, but we couldn't retake the lacing. What we did is we added the posing mechanic which you can see on the first uh, image right here with Spider-Man. So very similar to uh, games such as uh, lag simulation and that type of stuff. You have a little slider, a little circle that slide down into the right position and it changes the position of the character. So it was a very simple gameplay and mechanic with a very simple control, but with a quite satisfying feeling of moving the character as you want it. Uh, this was the first mechanic that we added and we added the pedestal choosing, which isn't like properly a gameplay mechanic. You just pick a pedestal that you want your hero to stand on, basically. Then we had it the put it in the box mechanic, which was directly uh, retook from a sneaker art. So you slide down your figurine this time around into the box. And finally, we also added the ceiling of the box. So at the end, you close the box off by sliding, uh, swiping down the uh, both edges and then you seal it off by putting tape on it because as some of you may know a lot of uh, collect the figurine collectors actually keep their figurines into a box in order to store their value uh, and not uh, put any dent on it and keep it as pristine as possible um, with this iteration with the three editions of gameplay mechanics we also added a few more figurines uh, I believe that during the second iteration, which took quite some time, it was about three weeks to a month of work. So additional to those three original weeks, uh, we had about, I think, eight to nine figurines at this stage. We also included ads because this time around, we wanted to see what was the LTV of the game. And we also wanted to see a better day three retention because as you can imagine, when an 18% day one retention, the day three retention originally was something like three to four percent. So obviously we wanted to see those numbers pumped up a little bit. And the second test really confirmed the huge potential that the game had. The second test yielded, uh, so never mind the little switch up here, but uh, when it comes to the retention metrics, the day one went from 18% to 38%. And the day three went from 3% to 14%. So this was a very, very successful iteration. I wish 
we would get such a success with every iteration that we make on every game that we iterate on. Uh, I also forgot to mention that we added the shop just like in sneaker. This was part of also the iteration. And when it comes to CPI, this time we had more figurines to pick from in order to test. And the CPI on Facebook that we had from 50 to 55 cents was this time around 30 cents. And uh, on both tests, it was very stable all around. Like it didn't move, it didn't budge. It was 30 cents on the second test. We left it for about two weeks in order to see if uh, it showed a good potential for scaling. So these were very exciting results, obviously, um, especially when it comes to the retention. Seeing such a boost is something that doesn't happen very often. And we were very proud of seeing the same pattern that we had made on sneaker work uh, the same way on figuring art. Uh, so at this stage, uh, what we had to do, we had quite a few figurines. We had the whole gameplay laid out. We had the shop in order to keep the, the progression uh, interesting for the player and collect and do as many variations as figurines as possible. So the next step was uh, getting the best CPI possible. 30 cents was good, but uh, we felt like we could do even better because this is the type of game that you can try a lot of things on because obviously we're playing with very famous characters and a lot of different franchises. So we tested every single figurine, uh, not only on Facebook, but also on other networks at this time. Um, we tried to identify the best one. Uh, we, we could play a game trying to guess which one it is, but I'm going to tell you the, the few ones that were the best ones. We had Pikachu be a, a very uh, good results, yield very good results. Uh, Spider-Man and Iron Man were also good results. And as of late in this stage of development of the game, we are seeing really great results with Oogie Woogie. Uh, so the very famous uh, Poppy Playtime character that uh, I'm sure most of you know by this point because it is all over the, the stores and it is used in various uh, icons and uh, games directly. And uh, at this stage, everything was laid out. So all we had to do was just keep adding more figurines because you can guess that with eight to nine figurines, players that play the game properly uh, just... Uh, like burn through the content in about um, like less than 24 hours, basically. Uh, and actually the play time at the stage went from 400 seconds to 1,100 seconds. Obviously this was due to the addition of more gameplay. Uh, of course, more gameplay means that people spend more time in order to start the figurine to finishing the figurine, but uh, it, it's also like a 300% boost. So this was absolutely amazing once again. But to get that day, day seven retention, uh, we had the day one, we had the day three, we needed the day seven this, this time around. So to get the day seven retention, we needed more figurines to keep people engaged for a longer time. So that's when we started producing uh, a lot more figurines. And this is actually not that simple of a, of a production process because, as I said, like there's the pausing uh, mechanic, which is a, a little complicated to adapt for every single 3D model, depending on the type of model as well, you can imagine. Um, but yes, that's pretty much what we did. When we released the game in May, middle of May, the game basically took over the world. Uh, we were top one in Colombia, Sweden, Malaysia, Serbia, Belgium, and Peru. We ended up top five in more than 30 countries, including the biggest ones like the US, where we yielded a top two. UK when we were top three, France, Turkey, top four and top three, Italy, Germany, Spain. So most out of what we call the tier one countries, the one that are that have the best uh, users in terms of LTV, uh, the, the game yielded very, very good results. And it was top 10 in more than 35 additional countries. So it was a success all over the world in a lot of countries. And you can imagine why, because the American culture uh, is uh, so spread out these days, like the MCU movies, the anime characters, the Pokemon franchise, for example, which is the most profitable franchise in entertainment media. Uh, we had a lot to play with. And it was funny to see that in certain countries, uh, certain figurines would work better than in others. Uh, such, uh, for example, such was the case 
in Japan where the Pokemons worked really well with Pikachu and some anime characters, where in the US it was more the MCU characters, for example. This is one of the most uh, obvious examples, for example. Um, and the top metrics that we reached right, right before the launch was 30 cents uh, CPI and 41% uh, day one retention. Uh, at this stage, the game has, we will celebrate very soon, uh, actually in the coming days, when you see this presentation might already be the case, actually, uh, 10 million downloads on the game. So between May and the uh, beginning of September, that's about four months of scale. This is very good results that we are very proud of. And as I said, this is also a success, twofold success for us because this was our first internal project. Uh, so it was uh, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of uh, hurdles and obstacles that we had to overcome, uh, but uh, something that uh, really uh, engaged all the people from the company, from game designers to game artists, game developers, a lot of branches were put to, put to work in order to make this one a success. And everybody's so, so proud of what we did on this one. Thank you very much for attending this presentation about figuring art. I hope that you learned a lot. And if you haven't uh, got the information that you needed yet, I will now take some of your questions. Thank you very much for listening.